fundamental analysis versus technical analysis. What is the difference and which one is actually better when analyzing some of your investment decisions like stocks, ETFs, cryptocurrencies, Forex, futures contracts, commodities, and precious metals, just to name a few, or anything in between. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's get into it right away and talk about the differences between fundamental analysis and technical analysis. But really quickly, before we do, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down below the video, as I'm back in videos every single day talking about topics just like this one and other topics that I'm knowledgeable and I have a lot of expertise about, and I want to share that with you right here in these videos. So thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate it. And I absolutely love talking about this stuff. So let's get into it right away. All right. So before we can talk about which one is actually better, and of course, that is personal preference. And of course, it comes down to your time horizon as far as how long are you going to be in this position? We'll talk about that more here in just a minute. But we first need to understand the basics behind fundamental analysis and technical analysis before we can get into talking about <laughs> which one is actually better, right? All right, so anyway, we'll get into that here in just a minute, but let's quickly brush on the basics behind fundamental analysis, and then we'll talk about technical analysis. All right, so fundamental analysis. In reference of, let's just say stocks, for example, if you're going to be investing in stocks, you want to maybe do some fundamental analysis. It totally depends on your time horizon and your personality as far as your investing style. However, fundamental analysis is something that is certainly very popular. Now, for this type of analysis, you may be looking at things like the management team. You're probably listening to earnings call each and every quarter. There's earnings calls. You probably we want to listen to that. You're probably looking at the specific earnings for each and every company that you might maybe want to invest in. You're probably looking at earnings projections, probably PE ratios, things like this, like the actual internals of a specific company. You're looking at all of that and projecting out like, is this a company that is probably projected to grow over the next six months, maybe year, five years, 10 years, 30 years, something like that? Is this company within a sector that's actually still going to be around in 30 years, right? I mean, there's a lot of sectors out there right now where you could be looking at companies saying, yeah, <laughs> this might be good for the next six months, but realistically, this company may not be around in five years from now. Well, if you're doing fundamental analysis, you probably want to check that out as well because there's a lot of companies out there that uh, maybe are doing something now that will be completely obsolete in a matter of a few years. You can probably think of some right off the cuff, uh, uh, right off your cuff, right? I mean, I can certainly think of a few that I, I would say like, yeah, probably don't want to be in that industry. Don't want to be in that stock. It's probably not going to be around much longer. You know, so I mean, sure, we can probably all think of companies like that. So that would be kind of the basics of fundamental analysis. Now, again, I know there's far more that goes into fundamental analysis than that, but I just kind of wanted to really briefly brush on the surface of what that type of analysis is. Now, let's compare it to technical analysis. With technical analysis, you are not looking at earnings, you're not looking at PE ratios, you're not listening to earnings calls, you're probably not looking at the management team. If you are somebody who is looking at technical analysis, you probably don't care less about any of that stuff that I just mentioned that is fundamentals, but rather you're looking at price charts. That's all you're looking at. Now, I'm probably going to get some pushback on this, but here's the thing. I've been studying technical analysis for about 13 plus years by now. I've learned a ton about it. And here's the thing. Most people who study technical analysis, you're probably looking at price charts covered in 18 different indicators, oscillators, um, all these moving averages and all of this other crap on your screen. Here's the thing. You don't need any of that junk. Get it off your screen. You only need a price chart. Learn how to read a price chart. That's all you need to do, okay? I know I'm probably gonna get some pushback on that, but here's the thing. I have used to do that too. Way back in the day when I first started, trust me, I had everything you could possibly think of on my screen. I had 18 different indicators, moving averages, I had the stochastics, I had MACD, I had volume, I have all this junk on my screen and it did not serve me in any way at all. But once I learned how to read an actual price chart, looking at only price, that's it, price and price alone, it was like, wow, I could remove all the crap on my screen. And it was like, whoa, this is nice. All I see are candlesticks. That's it. 
nothing else, no squiggly lines, no bars on the bottom, no little indicators pointing, oh, we're up plus 100, that means we're overbought. Who cares? Seriously, who cares what the indicators say? Learn how to read a price chart. And you can do that through candlesticks, Japanese candlesticks. You can do it through bar charts, maybe a simple line chart. But realistically, in my honest opinion, I would say candlestick charts are by far superior to any other type of chart out there. But again, that's just my personal preference because I feel like it, uh, it shows you all the data you need to know. The, the open, the close, the day high, and the day low. So as represented by the bodies and the wicks of each candle, right? So you probably know this if you've been uh, studying candlestick charts by any measure by now, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. So you maybe can tell I'm a little bit biased toward technical analysis versus fundamental analysis. However, now let's quickly talk about now that we know the differences between these two, which style is actually better? Now, I'm gonna give you a completely objective uh, answer when it comes to this. Even though I'm very biased when it comes to technical analysis, I'm actually going to give you an objective answer here. And I'm gonna say it completely depends on your time horizon as far as how long you want to be in a position. Now, here's the thing. If you wanna be in a position for three days, do you need to look at fundamental analysis? Honestly, no, you don't. You need to look at the technicals. That's all that's going to matter for a three-day position or pretty much anything less. If you're looking at look, uh, being in a position for maybe a week, two weeks, maybe something like that, again, do you need to look at fundamental analysis? In my honest opinion, no, it doesn't matter one bit at all. Honestly, that is my opinion. Um, but again, it comes down to your time horizon because would it really matter the fundamentals of a company if you're going to be in a position for a week, two weeks, maybe three hours? Does that really matter the fundamentals? Does it matter who's managing the company if you're going to be there for three hours? No, <laughs> honestly, it doesn't matter one bit. But on the, taking the other side of that, that argument, if you're going to be in a position for six months, maybe a year, maybe three years, five years, 10 years, 30 years, should you be looking at fundamentals? Yeah. Absolutely, you should be. You should be looking at fundamentals, analyzing the company in conjunction with technical analysis. Because here's the thing. If you can look at the fundamentals and you like what a company is uh, providing as far as their earnings, their management team, kind of the projections as far as going out into the future, if you can look at all of that and you can couple it with some long-term technical analysis, maybe on a weekly chart or on a monthly chart, and you can find a good entry point on the chart in conjunction with your tech or your uh, fundamental analysis with everything you're liking there, then yeah, you can really time some great entries on some long, long-term positions. Again, long-term, right? But it totally depends on your investing style, your personality, and everything like that. For me personally, I'm not the type of person who wants to get in a position and hold it for five years. That's not me. I'm more of the guy who likes to get into a position and pretty much get out like a week later, maybe a month later, something like that. I'm the type of person, I like quick action, right? I like something where I can get in today, get out in three hours for a nice profit, or I can get in today and maybe hold it for a week, maybe two weeks at most, maybe a month or two, but that'd be pretty long for me, realistically. I like to get in, grab some money, and get out. That's kind of my style. That was That is what fits my personality. But again, there's a lot of people out there who don't want to do that. And I totally get it. You know, for the long term, uh, for the most part, if you want to get into a position, you can certainly do that. Use some fundamental analysis, but I would also say uh, can join the fundamental analysis with some long-term technical analysis. Now, here's the thing. Why am I so biased about technical analysis and why do I think it's superior? Because here's the thing, price charts do not lie. Pretty much any company out there can cook the books as we've seen many other times with other companies out there. They can essentially tell us anything that they want to and it may not be true. And therefore we have to believe the, the, uh, the fundamentals, right? We only have what they, do, what they uh, present to us. Now here's the thing, when we look at a price chart, Price doesn't lie, it's a chart. It is, it is essentially measuring um, supply and demand and it is also measuring human emotion. That's exactly what you're seeing on a price chart. So when you look at a price chart, 
You're not looking at earnings. You're not looking at the management team. You're not looking at PE ratios. You're not looking at any of that stuff. You're simply looking at supply and demand and human emotion. That's all it is. Very simply put on a price chart. So when you see huge moves higher, that's basically greed. People jumping in and being fearful that they're missing out and or people covering shorts either way. It's buying pressure. That's all it is. People buying stock right? That's all it is. People buying. That's all it is. A big green candle, a big surge higher, a parabolic move, a hyperbolic move higher. It's just people buying. That's all it is. It's either a, it's a, it's an abundance of buyers and or a lack of sellers, basically pushing prices higher. Now, one other thing I want to talk about, and of course we can come back in a future video and talk about this a little bit further. Many people out there who look at fundamental or uh, sorry, technical analysis are looking for the basic patterns head and shoulders, double top, this teacup pattern or all this other junk. You're looking at all these things. Here's the thing. Guess who else is looking at these patterns? Yeah, you called it the big guys over on Wall Street, the guys who have hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars who are competing against you to steal your money. Okay, it's not stealing your money, but they want to take your money, right? That's basically what trading is. It's an even sum gum or it's a zero sum game. So for every dollar that is gained, one dollar is lost by somebody else. So guess who has the money that they want to get? They want to get your money over those guys on Wall Street. They want to grab your money, right? So what are they looking at as well? Well, they're also looking at head and shoulders patterns. They're also looking at double tops. They're also looking at all these other patterns that are very commonly known. They're looking at trend lines, you know, common trend lines that people put out there. And they're looking at all this stuff. So why do you typically see when you see a common pattern like a head and shoulders or a double top pop up and all of a sudden the head and shoulders, there it is, oh my gosh, there's the neckline, let's short it when it goes beyond the, the neckline and all of a sudden it goes down maybe a little bit, you know, maybe 10, 20 cents, 30 cents, something like that and all of a sudden it reverses and shoots way higher. Oh, they just ran the stops. Yeah, they do that because they can see your stops. So guess what? They want to grab your money. They run the stops and all those people who are shorting when it breaks the neckline on a head, on a head and shoulders and then all of a sudden they rip it higher and grab all your money. Ha, what a, what a strategy, right? Well, that's what happens for the guys over on Wall Street who have tons of money, way more than we have, and they can do stuff like that. So you got to be aware of that stuff. Or maybe you're looking at a pattern like a double top, right? When you see the, the one high and then it goes down and then it comes back up and retests the high, what do you do then? You short, right? Well, what happens when you place your stop just above the wick of the other high? What happens when they run the, the when they run the wicks like that? Oh, they run all the stops again. Oh, there it goes. You just got stopped out and they, they take your money and then all of a sudden they reverse it and drop it, right? How many times have you seen that happen? I know I've seen it more times than I can even count. So. You've got to be very aware of this stuff because they can see all of this stuff. They watch the patterns just like we do, but they have the money to manipulate the, the prices of stocks, ETFs, or basically anything else like that. And they can basically do this stuff, grab the money, run the stops, and all of a sudden they rip it the other way, right? I guarantee you, if you've been watching the market for any length of time now, if you've been following technical analysis, I guarantee you, you've seen this stuff happen. I know I've seen it many, many times. I was one of those people as well. Put the stop just on the other side of the wick, right? And all of a sudden you get stopped out by like three pennies and all of a sudden they rip it the other way and it's like, oh, that was cool. <laughs> just got stopped out by a penny and now it's going my direction. Yeah. So anyway, just be very aware with those very common technical analysis patterns that you probably see out there that I've been talking about. What I would basically say, learn how to read supply and demand on a, on a stock chart. Look for the candles that indicate massive buy-in, massive selling, and entry points as far as how you can get in and get out. When you can learn how to read a price chart, you can be like the guys on Wall Street who are basically doing the exact same thing, looking for pockets of demand, looking for pockets of supply, and then joining the big boys. When they get into a pocket of demand, you can be right there and starting to buy along with them, right? Pretty cool stuff, either way. So I hope this helps you out. But again, you've got to learn how to read a price chart. All it is is supply and demand on a price chart. You're looking at it right there. Willing buyers versus willing sellers. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, I hope this helps you out to better understand the differences between fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Again, 
Totally depends on your personality, your investing style, and of course, your time horizon. I would say the shorter the time frames, I would lean toward technical analysis. The longer the time frames, I would lean toward fundamental analysis, and then on top of it, also implement some technical analysis so that you can see some really good entry points for your longer term positions. Yeah, pretty good. Anyway, hope this helps you out. Leave it, uh, leave some questions or comments down below if you have any. I'll continue doing whatever I possibly can to keep you updated as well as to help you out in other videos just like this one. And of course, I will certainly be back with more videos talking about fundamental analysis and of course, technical analysis. I absolutely love this stuff. It is so cool watching it. And uh, yeah, I've learned a ton over the 13 plus years that I've been studying this stuff very, very closely. So enjoy your day. Thanks again for your support. Subscribe down below, share the videos with your friends, family, social media, and of course, go back and check out some other videos right here on the channel. Thank you. I appreciate it.